Chameleon. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You, 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 you feel it hot? No, no, no. Cool it. You, you feel it. Cool it, nah. You feel it hot, man. You feel. You is a hot man. Watch here. You come. Daytime TV, you're blinging. Watch here. You have one okay now. Look, eh, eh. Watch here. Bavado, boom, bang, bang. You're hot. You're hot. Louis Vuitton shades, okay now. You're hot. Oh, God. Oh, God. Just say thanks, man. Let me take the time. You're taking it off? Let me take the time to see. I don't think nobody ever see your eyes. I, gas, well, let me yeah. see you too because I don't think nobody ever see your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> nobody? Look how nice he is. Today, today, so why is wear shades then? If you're, if you're so, you're just a cutie boy, you're a pretty well, boy. It's just, a, it's just a, a thing from a long time. It's just a signature, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, anybody that know me, you know, always know me for shades and I'm, I'm a shades collector too. You know? He's a shades collector. So, you know? But you know, people looking at you from social media. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of people when they look on social media, they get the wrong impression of people sometimes. It's the right impression, but that's just like one dimensional. Yeah. You know, because people say, oh, you know, he always, you know, flashy. flashy. He always wearing nice clothes. He always yeah. have nice things. <laughs> but what people don't know is that he's a family man. Yeah. He's a family yeah. man. Must, must. Tell us a little bit about, you know, that whole aspect about your family. How important is family to you? Um, well, basically, um, who do really know where I come from? Uh, we have a business called Charlie's Black Pudding. Um, it's a hundred years old, and basically, um, I run, I manage the, um, from the factory aspect, and you know, deal with production, supply about um, two different Charlies. Um, there's about nine different Charlies in Trinidad, and well, we just have to carry on the legacy. It's a hundred years old. Wow. So my great grandmother and my great grandfather started the business, and it trickled down, and now. I am the one to take. So is take it, it all family run? All yes. the Charlies? Um, all the Charlies is basically when coming to the, the, the legacy, it's a it's a family secret. Um, when coming to Pudding, South Roosburg, and it's strictly my uncles and my cousins and all of them making pudding and we all stick together and then supply Trinidad and Tobago. All right. Well, that's good. And I guess that's something that you're going to be passing down to the next generation. Yes. You just started your own family, yeah. young Mikey. Yeah, so this yeah, is something yeah. for him to look forward to also and, yeah. you know, be trained in terms of taking over one day. Yeah. But Ali Bocas, that yeah. is, his real name is John Michael Ali Bocas, yeah. right? All this Macamillion <laughs> and the great white and all of that. You are John Michael Ali Bocas, and that's yes. a very popular name yes. in Trinidad and Tobago. Tell us. About your sister Faye Alibokas. She won Miss Ryan Tobago in what year? 2003 yeah, or 6? I think I have. 2003. Yeah, 2003. You know, that's my big sister. That's your big sister. Yeah, she looks her. exactly I like you. I love her daily. <laughs> daily. They got Faye. Um, she went up for Miss Trinidad and Tobago, you know. What was that like seniors. for the family? I mean, going through that whole experience. It's, just, it's like so famous and all that. Yeah, well, at that point in time when she went up, you know, our whole our whole family was on, like everybody was, it was they were just watching the family, you know what I mean? So you couldn't really make any bad moves. Yeah. Any, any kind of moves is because it reached the papers, you, you know? To, you have to watch everything. You have to watch everything, yeah. everything. And then, you know, she did well, you know? She she, she was in the top, the top 20 sweetest woman in the world. In Miss World. Because so, yeah. she made it all Miss the way Universe, to the Miss Listen, Universe. your sister really beautiful, huh? Yeah, she's really nice. At the end of the day, nice. she's beautiful. All right, so that's Faye, and your dad is a very renowned, well, was, yes. God rest his soul, may you rest A homeopathic peace. doctor. Right. Um, he died, he died from cancer. Right. My mom died from cancer too. But at the end of the day, you don't know, that's, that's, that's life. Yeah. You know? I mean, we just have to, you know, l learn from our parents what they have taught us, how, and then now, we now in the next generation are going to be fathers and mothers and try to be the best father of the best mother yeah. to our children you know you think you're, you're, you're taking this fatherhood job very serious because um, yeah, you had some good parents yeah you know I, I have to because at the end of the day you know um your, your children just look up to you 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 are like your children's hero mm -hmm. you know so at the end of the day you know like t you, you you like um she woman you know? <laughs> 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 at the end of the day whenever a problem needs to be fixed they look upon us mm. to fix that problem yeah. and no matter what Daddy and mommy, you know, could never die. Right. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we just have to stay focused for our children, make sure that they're good, um, take them to, you know, just guide them to be the best that they could be. Right. Okay, so in terms of being your professional self now, mm -hmm. you already talked about Charlie's pudding, right? You're, you're 
one of the owners of one of the franchise, but yeah. you're also one of the main stakes in the business. Yeah. Apart from that, you're also a promoter, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. how is this whole no carnival thing working? I mean, yes, you have your, your, your other business going on, but how do, is, is it affecting you? Um, well, everything, everything happens for a reason. You know, uh, I started promotion maybe about 20 years ago. This is my 20th year in entertainment. And, you know, every five years was like a, a big change, yeah. you know. It went from me starting my first party called Supernova with yeah. Young Execs. Um, big up Barry Lewis, Basel, because that's one of my mentors in the business. He was one of the men that guided me, saw the talent in me, you know, because um, it, it had a time, my mom, my mom and I was driving, coming up the road, and she, you know, she she wanted me to be a doctor. You know, every mom wanted to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or, or, you know, you know, something real nice in society that you know. And what what went on is she she, she says, um, John, I see you only going behind this promotion thing, promotion thing, promotion thing. She says, why do you want to get into promotion? She says, son, tell me one reason why that um, that I should support you in this in this field. She says, what do you want to be? I say, well, mom, I want to be a promoter. She says, you want to be a promoter? You understand? I'm sending you to do your degree by Roy Tekan, and you want to be a promoter? I say, yeah. She says, give me one reason. I say, well, mom, I'm real well-known in South, you know, popular from since I was small. I say, I know a thousand people. I say, a thousand people at a hundred dollars is a hundred thousand dollars. She stay quiet. She stopped the castle. She said, John, where is it? I say, a thousand people at a hundred dollars is a hundred thousand. Yes, a business yeah, man. Okay, John. She said she was support me. She gave me my first five thousand dollars. I invested into my first party, and then that went into three hundred events. By the time I was twenty-three years old, um, I got the opportunity to to move with the great whites of promotion. <laughs> you know, what I mean, at a young age, at twenty-three years old, big up to Cliff Harris, big up to Roy Mirage, and these are these are the people that have a, a, a huge part right. of entertainment when putting on some of the biggest mass marketed events. Yeah. And um, I was at, at 23 years old, Cliff Harris called me and said, yo, you know, John Michael, you know, he's one of the best youth men I ever see and he would like me to take, take up on doing fire fed, wasa fed, army fed. And I started to do it and I got into fetting, even though I was into disco. Yeah. And from there, just transition into me doing clubs and doing, um, I did 13 events within a month. Right. For about three years, um, I manage um, VIP also Thursdays in Edge, which is the first Thursday night in San Fernando and in clubbing in San Fernando. So I took that risk. Um, then I did living room in the East, which was like the Zen of the East back yeah. then, <laughs> you know. And then you know we had we had things like um, Slam and Saturdays mm -hmm. with Sting, mm -hmm. you know, whereby Sting nightclub was one of the biggest nightclubs. So I used to manage all three, and those things just keep. Evolving and evolving. And you just move from strength to strength. strength and then, you know, strength. you become renowned and you were like young in the business, but at the same time, very, very respected. Very and I think that that is one of the reasons why there are a lot of youngsters that look up to you. Yeah. Talking about youngsters, can we talk about your next hat now? Your uh, manager and marketing genius <laughs> when it comes to the younger generation. I mean, you have so many artists that you, you know, you bring out there and whatever. Involved. What... Is it hard for you to market and manage the younger generation? And what message do you have to give to them? Well, what I would say, um, I started with, back in the days, this, this came from, from uh, having a passion for music. Uh, I was, I, I grew up seeing Fee, my sister, singing, because she sings opera, and Kess. I grew up seeing Kess. Yeah, Kess was young. Yeah, I know you're close with Kess. Kess and I grew, we, I, I, grew, I grew up with Kess since I was four years old. And I saw, I saw him from stages go up. Right. And I can remember always seeing them singing by the piano. They had a group called Class mm -hmm. back then, uh, which was my sister, um, Kess, Michael Zephyrin, and a fellow called Mark Alexander. And they would go and do shows all over South. So my musical part of me came from growing up, seeing them every day practicing. Right. You know? And then... From there, um, I came across one of my good friends, Multisymptom, which yeah. is one of the greatest <laughs> voices in, in, in music in Trinidad right now. And from there was Doggy Slaughter. And it was just a whole heap of artists along my journey of this 20 years. Yeah. Um, managing everybody at different points. You know, um, it had different stages. The, the business keep changing. Yeah. So you had to keep you, you had to keep moving with the times. But that that hasn't affected you at all because I know from then to Kerry John to even now your new artist yeah. is what's his name? 
You know, Zebby. Zebby. Zebby's Zebby Zebby's doing Zebby. well and yeah. watching his videos. You know, so you're on the right track yeah. where that yeah. is concerned. So let's say whether you're an entrepreneur for pudding, yeah. whether you're a marketing manager, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether you are the artist, because we didn't even talk about that, but yeah. we've done a couple rhythms together also. Yeah. So you wear so many hats and yeah. I'm really, really proud of you and I'm glad that you're here. But since you're here, I had a little pressure on you now. Yeah. I, I could put a little pressure on you. I'm a pressure you now. I'm a pressure you like a jackhammer. I'm a pressure you now. I'm a pressure you. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure, yeah. I'm a little hot seat. I'm a little hot seat. You ready? Tell yeah. me when you're ready. I don't want you to do nothing if you're oh ready. Lord. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? <laughs> okay, okay. We want to know more about you, but in a more personal way, right? So yeah. these questions I get to was that. What is the first thing that you do when you're bored? When I'm bored? Mm -hmm. um, the first thing, mm -hmm. well, basically, I just go and I just play music, you know what I mean? I just get more into the music, you know? That's what I do when I bowl. Serious? Yeah, just go up on when the internet music, and look. You, you look, just play music normal? Nah, just, just look at different artists and just take in the music, you know? I like to play music when I make it. Just, I just feel free. I just feel free. I just feel free. Singing the bachelor. <laughs> That's what somebody else is talking about. You feel like it's a sicko, and I just just pour the music and strip naked. I took up a when I'm in the shower. Look now, Maka. All right. What three things would you never spend your money on? Never. Ever. Cigarettes. Okay. Um, You're not a smoker. Drugs. You do take drugs. Yeah. You don't even drink alcohol. I try for my longest fate. It'll take a little sip. Yeah, and basically, um, running woman. <laughs> Son, this is not the death struggle, I say a lion show. This is not the death struggle, I say a lion show. Right? Stay away from the lights. <laughs> All right, next question. Ha ha ha. What is the most normal thing about you that people don't know? The most normal thing you can talk about? Um, I just love people. You know, I, I love human beings. I love, I love to, you know, be there, you know, check for them. Yeah. Hear problems, yeah. try to see how best we could fix problems. Yeah, yes, do and that a little too much, but all yeah, right, no problem. Yeah, yeah. What's your horoscope? <laughs> Let the people know what you're what. I'm Aquarius. He's Aquarius, he's a Aquarius, water bearer. Aquarius. Oh my god. All right, I'm going along. Eh? What soca song do you feel the absolute urge to sing along to whenever you hear it? It don't have to be my song, eh? just because you're the best. Right, <laughs> well, well, to me, to me, your song stands out to me, you know. Um, the most one of one of them because okay, Lucy, apart Lucy. from my song, no, I nah. say. Well, I need to tell them. Right, why. Okay, okay, okay. So what went on is um, well, Destra, Destra, I had uh, I had the opportunity to go on tour with her, and basically we went to Venezuela, and I could always remember that. You know, when I came outside, I, I was like, "This is Michael Jackson," because <laughs> <laughs> because all these Venezuelan people shaking down the bus, shaking. I talk about thousands, about thirty thousand Spanish people. So I trying to understand, but how these Spanish people shaking on this bus for Destra, which which which. She sings in English. <laughs> and they speak right? in and Spanish. And they speak in Spanish. And they know all the words. <laughs> and they know all the words. So when we went on now, I could always remember Lucy. You so that's say, stick in your mind. Yeah, but so every time you hear it, you just remember that yeah, moment. I, that I, I just remember you. I just remember, you know, how music could change the world. And you don't even have to you don't even have to speak the language because yeah. I talk about thirty thousand Spanish people were she said move to the left, move to the right, yeah. and they move to the left, they move to the right, they move to the back, and I talk about thirty thousand Spanish people out there yeah. singing Lucy. Yeah, for so to me, to me that stand out the most when coming to me being on two and I watch that and I say, nah boy. Memories. Amazing, yeah. amazing that shit. That was yeah. amazing. Thank you. I'm gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your most hilarious childhood experience that you could think of uh, right now, like in this moment? Hilarious. Yeah, like some funny that happened to you in your life that, you know, like, yeah. That's real funny. Um, well, now that I think about it, it's funny. But back then it wasn't funny. <laughs> right? Boy, I, used to, I, used to, I used to go boys' school. Boys uh -huh. are it had St. Gabriel's Day. And every time I go by St. Gabriel's, it had these girls, boy, that just used to pants me right through. <laughs> I used to, I used to, I used to, I used to be balling the road, the whole man, and the pants in me. I, I don't know what the pants in me to see. So wait, I was young. You didn't like that at I all. Did, I didn't like it, but now when I think about it, it's funny. <laughs> you understand? 
<laughs> no wait, if they do it, if you if you had to go back now, knowing what you know now as yeah. a grown up, right? Yeah. Back then, if you know, you know what I mean. Like sometimes when you're a child, you don't think a certain way because yeah. you're innocent. Yeah, I but now innocent. you're a grown up, right? Yeah, ah, she can pants me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you? you see you, you're not easy. Listen, that's not the end we get. That's the last question for that. But I have a game for you too. Right. I can't bring you here and, yeah. and just waste yeah. the time. I, don't know. I have a game called Marshmallow Mouth. Right. Now hear how this game goes, right? We're going to get right now. Right, right. Marshmallow Mouth. You see that marshmallow there? Right. Behind the cup? You're supposed to... Fill them out with as many as you can. Huh. Don't overdo it because we don't want you to choke. Right. right? All the dice the disclaimer. I ain't why I'm choke. Yeah. Fill them out. And have a little notepad next to you there. Right. You will look at the... It have a lineup of, of, I think, songs or names of songs that I sang, I think. And you have to try to let me guess it. So when you put the marshmallows in your mouth, right. you have to say it. Say what song title you see right. in there. And I have to guess. Say what song title. You're talking with the marshmallow in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Talk to the marshmallow. No. You see some titles there? Don't tell me. Right. I had a guess. And after, after... You had to fill up your mouth with marshmallows. So take the marshmallows and <laughs> stop them in your mouth. <laughs> stop right. it. So let me do this thing. Let me do this All thing, right? right? How much you can put, put, put? You're taking up one at a time. It's plenty out of put. Don't eat it. Don't chew up the marshmallow. <laughs> Shove it in your mouth. <laughs> Go, go, more, 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 mm. one more, all right. Mm. Stuff it in, like in, in, ah, oh. it can't go in. But how you gonna talk, you gotta push it in. <laughs> Put the marshmallow in your mouth. All right, you can talk with that? Mm. All right, where's the first one? <laughs> what? <laughs> Max it up. Mm. All right, okay. I got one, next one. Carnival. Carnival. Mm. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Huh? Lucy? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lucy, Lucy. <laughs> that sounds like something else, not for TV. All right. Stop taking all the marshmallow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. oh, wah, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. oh, wah, 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 wah. You sound like a duck. Oh, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. oh, wah. <laughs> One more time. Mm -hmm. Bacchanal. Mm -hmm. All right. I feel it true. And the thing on the low in the back there. <laughs> Keep it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Really good? Mm -hmm. Be yourself. <laughs> 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 mm. uh, all right. If you had shove it in your mouth more, then it would have got moist by now. I done moist. It got moist. <laughs> <laughs> it done moist. Put it back in your mouth. That's not the game. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't guess that one. Mm -hmm. Bunny and Clyde! Mm -hmm. Ah, God! <laughs> All right, Maka. Choose, choose, choose and end it. End it, end it, end it. Oh my God, I pay you something there, boy. Well, Listen, that's... I hope this video don't go viral, you know, hmm. because the great white was eating some white marshmallow. <laughs> You're supposed to be eating marshmallow. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it for the game, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Marka. Thanks for coming, passing through, that's being great. a good sport. Mm -hmm. And also, on, in public, I could say being a good friend because you are one of those people that I consider my brother. Yeah. I love you very, very much. And I'm saying that in front of the whole of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. We have a very special relationship, you of know? Of course. Um, keep going. Keep yeah. promoting the youth, yeah. you know, because you do a really good job at that. I know that sometimes it feels like, you know, you're, you do and do and do, and sometimes people do appreciate sometimes. Mm -hmm. But... When you're on God's mission, as you always are, yeah. because, you know, your mom was very spiritual and religious and stuff, and she mm -hmm. taught you a lot, you just keep going. It shows. You're always blessed. You're, yeah. In these COVID times, you have a whole business. Yeah. I ain't got no pudding yet, but that is all right. <laughs> that is all right. Oh. I didn't tell you I like pudding. I like pudding. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, so, Maka, thanks for coming. Let everybody know your handles, please. Um, basically, people, you could, you could find my... Um, on Instagram, Macamillion1. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, I am Macamillion. Mm -hmm. And basically, just 
check us up on Instagram. You don't know Instagram is a new phone number, yeah? That's what we're talking about. You know, but God bless you. Thank you, darling. I love you. I love you. You know, you know we put God first. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time.